we're studying the migratory connectivity of the black blade plover, the long-billed curlew, the red knot, and the marbled godwit here in the south coast of Texas. And migratory connectivity is basically the, the linking of individuals and, and populations of, of animals, in this case birds, throughout their entire annual cycle. That means figuring out where birds that spend the winter in places like North Padre Island actually migrate and where they go to breed and then where they come back again. Here we have ideal conditions weather-wise and in terms of the ecological integrity of the area and we've also got that for an extended period of time. So this place is really productive all year round for birds that are breeding here, birds that are migrating here and birds that are wintering here. One of the reasons we know so little about migratory connectivity is we haven't been able to track them. We just haven't had the technology to be able to track these individuals over space and time. And so it's the advances we're seeing in smaller and smaller tracking devices that's really allowing us to gain these really critical insights into the biology of these birds. Thanks to a grant from ConocoPhillips, we can track these shorebirds using two types of transmitters. The first type is a 9.5 gram solar Argo satellite transmitter. They turn on for 10 hours and then they're off for 48. For the 10 hours the transmitter's on, it's collecting data points and sending them up to satellites. Now the other transmitter type we're using, it's a 3.4 gram archival GPS Argo satellite transmitter. And this is the first time we're really using this transmitter. These transmitters are collecting 30 GPS points and they're storing it on the transmitter. And after it takes the 30th point, it will turn on and transmit to the satellites. Capturing shorebirds is, is a bit of a tricky thing during the non-breeding season. We have to use something called a cannon net. Along the beach, we position this device pointing towards the shoreline and then we try to force the birds into this area where the net will actually fly. Convincing a bird or a group of birds to go in front of one of our nets is obviously very tricky. In order to do that, you've essentially kind of got to get into the birds' heads and try to figure out what they're thinking and what kinds of things are going to make them react in different ways. Once the birds are in that point, we hit a switch, the net blows out like a cannon and falls harmlessly on the birds, and then we all run up there and grab these birds. Once we have the birds in the hand, that's when we really start to process the birds. We'll put a USGS aluminum band on their leg, we'll put a flag on the band that uh, has a number on it and it's readable with binoculars at a distance, and we also take a feather sample, take a blood sample, measure the bird, and then we put the little satellite transmitter on the back of the bird, tie it, knot it, make it fairly permanent, and we let the bird go. In general, shorebirds as a group are declining by over 50% since 1968. A big problem in part because we just don't know where or why they're dying. And that's sort of the, the thing we're trying to figure out ultimately is what's causing these birds to die, what's causing their populations to decline. And so it's the advances we're seeing that's really allowing us to gain these really critical insights into the biology of these birds. And those insights, I'm hoping, are ultimately going to help us protect them and to work towards conserving these wonderful species. Music